You say you lived in Charlie's building? Yep. I'm Samantha. I'm his niece. Nice okay, nice meeting you. We may need a couple of gentlemen to serve as pallbearers if we have them. Thank you so much. Hey, Mama. You can be all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm good. I'm real good. Okay. This is this is Marie. Hi Marie. Hi Marie. Nice to meet you. You from Charlie's building? Yes. Yes. And another baby in the building. Oh, that's fine. Got a coat? Mm-hmm. It's kind of chilly. Oh. Hey, dude. Thank you for coming down. Yeah, I thought you. She said she's right over there. So I thought she was. All right. relation up here to the front with me those who have been making these arrangements if you would step closest to me who is getting going <laughs> yeah did not expect this All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have gathered here to pay our respects to, to Mr. Hatchett. And our program is calling for a prayer, and we're going to look to God now. So if you would, bow your heads. Father, we thank you now for your goodness and your kindness towards this family. I ask that you would bless them and keep them as only you can. Father, even in this, we say thank you for the life of Mr. Charlie Hatchett. Hatchett and we just say thank you for all that you allowed him to do and all that you allowed him to accomplish. Give your name praise for it all. In Jesus' name, let every child of God say amen. 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 The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death and will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to our God. At this time, is there anyone that would like to have some remarks on behalf of your loved one today? 
Who will be the first? All right. Um, well, my name is Michelle. Um, uh, I've been knowing Charlie. Well, Charlie's been knowing me since so I knew myself. Um, he's been a good family friend for years. He's like a grandpa to me. I'm gonna wish you. Amen. 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 I met Charlie a year ago about this time. I was introduced to Charlie to Sedina. And in his last day when he came back from Alabama, it was always the same. His demeanor is beautiful. You always call him up and say, how you doing? I'm doing well. That's good. Even though he was sick and he knew he had his illness, he never, he never talked about it. He just kept going forward. We called him and said, hey, they ain't doing nothing for me. I don't like this food. <laughs> come and get me. They're supposed to be here. You come too. <laughs> I'll pull up and let it pull behind so we go to the hospital and we go to get the doctor. Beautiful man. I learned a lot talking to him about his life experiences. Some of the things that he told me rubbed off on of me for, for my future going down the road. Mm -hmm. We loved him. Adorable man. I was going to hop I said, Where's Charlie Hatchet? Oh, he's in the room, so and so. I said, How you get there? Mm -hmm. And they took him like a mile. Go this way, go that way, go up, go around. But we finally found him. Yeah. But he, he was very st stubborn. <laughs> he had to make his mind up. You couldn't break that barrier, but could you do? He said, yes, yeah, support him. Because we love you. We love you. Man. I love you, Charles. Mm -hmm. I miss sometimes. Alright, the next day. Mm -hmm. Ain't that not wouldn't do for you. They sent him coming, snatch him out the nursing home, come and rescue him. Come, he, he always fuck somebody. Come get me. Come get me out of here, just like you said, Donald. He, he was looking for you. Yeah, I got my stove. And I love you, Charles. I got my clothes. Ain't that not wouldn't do for you. Mm -hmm. With nowhere I wouldn't run for you. With donuts, I go get donuts. You want mm -hmm. cheesecake, I go get cheesecake. Knowing you weren't supposed to eat that stuff. So what? Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Another? Yes, sir. My name is Dennis Matthews. I am uh, uh, I call him Uncle Charlie. Uh, we got to know each other a little. I didn't get to know him for a long time, and today God has taken me to heaven. Amen. Amen. Charlie was my great grandfather's brother, and I never knew my great grandfather. He died when I was about three years old. But Uncle Charlie was ever present in our lives. He looked out for all of his nieces, all of his sisters, kids, all of his brothers, kids. He would always come to visit, regardless of the distance that he had to travel. If we lived in Georgia, he came to see us. We lived in Alabama, he came to see us. We moved to California, he flew out to see us. He was ever present. And during the times that we were on hard times, when my father wasn't there, when my father wasn't there, 
Charlie would make sure there was food in the refrigerator. He would make sure that the light bill got paid, that the electricity was on. If, if for no other time while he was there, this is what was going to happen. And he was in our lives always. He would call and call and call. I don't care how many times he had to call. If he didn't get you today, he's going to get you tomorrow. He didn't get you in the morning, he's going to get you in the evening. What time is it in California? I'll call you back. And he would just call. And the moment I pick up the phone, hey, how you doing? And you know what? I'm taking this medication. Can you tell me what this is? And he was just always there. He was always in my life. And I don't know what it's going to be like moving forward without him. And I'm going to miss him so much. Yeah, I see all his family members from Alabama. It's just been nice to see all y'all, meet all y'all. Charlie had come here some 65 years ago, or more than 65 years ago. He was 16, I think, when he first come to Cleveland. He uh, he was adopted by a lot of people here in Cleveland. I'm sitting next to Rick and my friend Rob, and we see what we call the Top Cat there. And uh, Charlie was like our little big brother because he was 10, 12 years older than all of us. But uh, he joined us and we, jo we joined him. Uh, and I'm not talking about every few months, it's almost like a daily ritual. Like y'all talking about he called daily? He was part of our lives daily for over 65 years. Uh, I'm proud to see um, my kids here, my children here. And they said, Dad, we're going to be there. Charlie's like family, even though he wasn't blood relatives to any of us. And, uh, you know, I look at my daughter over there, Lisa, she know I'm going to tell it. You know, Charlie would always be a fixture at our house. So he would say, you, you know you my nigga. And I said, Charlie, you my nigga. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so then she was say, three or four years old, and she looked out the window, and Charlie was just pulling up, getting out the car. And we had some family in the house. She said, Daddy, here come your nigga. <laughs> Charlie heard her shoot. It was yeah. summertime, right? He heard her say, oh, yeah, I'm your daddy. And so from that point on, so just a few weeks ago, he was in the car with me and I took her by his house, her house, and she was on the job. She said, Dad, you know I'm coming out to the car to see Charlie. Mm -hmm. And she came out of her house and hugged Charlie. And so he was an intricate part of our family uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, Rob here. You know, he worked for me, he worked for Rob, he's associated with Rick very closely and Top Cat just at uh, your house a few weeks ago. You know, not, not two weeks ago. Oh, uh, it's crazy, crazy. Yeah, you cook some of them, I cook them dinner. You know? <laughs> so, you know, Charlie was a picture. I just want to say, I've been knowing him for six, over 60 years and I don't know nothing bad I can say about him. Nothing bad I can say about him. Our neighborhood, gambling, it wasn't bad. Gambling was part of our nature, <laughs> you know. And he would say, a baby can win it, but a bear can't take it. <laughs> How he deal with money, you know. Mm -hmm. He said, don't be no bird nest on the ground. Yeah. You know, and I've taught my children that that's what Charlie said. Don't be no bird nest. Don't be vulnerable. Don't, you know, right. for a lot of things, um, you know. Uh, intricate part of our family, and I was honored to go out there to the nursing home with him and go to the doctors with him and go here with him. They would come out and say, hey, Are you family? Are you family? You know, like that. And I almost just plainly say yes, even though mm -hmm. in my mind I'd say no, right? So we did everything we could for Charlie. My conscience is clear uh, to, to, to the last drop. Uh, and, you know, I'm a firm believer that the time is gonna come, you know, the scriptures say, uh, Jesus say, he'll call your name and you'll come out, right? Yeah. And uh, I look forward to seeing Charlie in the very, very uh, near future, um, you know, when this system ends. So mm -hmm. I love you all, but I want you all to know that Charlie was well taken care of there. Yes, he was. He was well taken care of there in Cleveland. Uh, as far as where he lived, where he ate, you know, one time I hired him to be a manager of one of my properties, one of my businesses, and he called me like one o'clock that night. He said, 
I don't have, I don't look like no manager. I need some money to go get some clothes. <laughs> look managerial. <laughs> and Rob know that he's worked around Rob uh, restaurants and clubs for years. Mm -hmm. He's associated with Rick for years. And he wanted to look nice. So, mm -hmm. uh, Top Cat got similar stories. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we all come out the same neighborhood. So, um, and some I see some here that go low, low. And my brother. And, they go my, my son there. So all my children are here because this was Charlie. Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock ain't too early for them to get up to come and say That's goodbye right. to Charlie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Thank you all. I appreciate you all yeah. for coming out here today and showing your love. And the question was just asked, what is family? Yeah. Family is not always blood. Mm -hmm. Family is what makes you relatable. Yeah. How can we love one another? And he was about Maybe two o'clock this morning, I was thinking about coming out here today. And I really realized today when the old folk used to say, love hurts. If you think about it, it's a beautiful thing. When, when something or someone that you love is taken from you, it hurts. It don't bother you if somebody leaves here that you really didn't like. It doesn't bother you if someone leaves here that you really don't care for. But when someone that you love is removed from you, it really is a beautiful thing because it makes you remember who they were to you and what they meant to you. And all of these, these words today, you all have eulogized him. You have spoken well of him. And so I leave you with this one thought today. God said, today is your day of mourning and weeping. But very soon, there's coming a day when nothing in this world will ever make any of you cry again. I ask you all today to just trust God even in death he promised to wipe away your tears he said blessed are they that mourn for you shall be comforted how can you be comforted if you never cry and so he gives us these unique opportunities to feel pain just so he can take it away Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you now for the life of this wonderful man. Thank you for all these friends that have gathered, gathered to pay respect and homage to him. And now, Father, it's become our duty to give him back to you. And we just say thank you for his life. And we honor you and ask that you would be with these friends and family and protect them and provide for them as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's give him back to God together, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what we call the prayer of committal. So for as much as it had pleased the almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this soul, out of this world, the soul of our deceased father and friend, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Father, we give him back to you for safekeeping. We ask that you would take care of him from here. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If any of you would like to come and choose a flower in his remembrance, you can do so at this time. Yes, sir. And his final resting place would be right over here, right where you see that drum. Right? Some extras. I think a few people will be some. Okay. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'm Rick. I'm the one that talked to you on the phone. Oh, hey, Rick. Hey, can I get a hug? <laughs> hey, my man. Oh, he was bothered. I know it. He was bothered. We used to talk about you all the time. I'm glad I got a chance to see you in the picture. Oh, yeah, because that was my man. Yeah, he was. I don't. I think uh, there's a lot of family that was a little intimidated by Charlie, but there's a lot of people that just didn't know what a sense of humor he yeah. has, how funny he was, and how how interested he was in your life. Because he would call me and he would listen, you know, to what was 
going on mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. And he was just, um, he was not just my great uncle, he was a friend. Yeah. And it was generations between us. And people would ask, you know, how did y'all get so close? I said, because Uncle Charlie calls. He calls. Yeah, he and would tell me every time he'd go to California. He was in Riverside one time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to see my niece. I'm going to see my nephew. I brought him out for the holidays. I need to let everybody know, can you spread the word for us to meet over at b, &M b &M, Barbecue? Because yeah. I have a, a brunch over there um, okay. arranged for everybody. Hey, Hopefully she's right, going to put the word out. A friend of Sabina's. So one year she wanted to give him a party. I remember so that. My sister and I, we cooked all this food because he wanted some green. I remember. He wanted some sweet potatoes. He wanted some black eyed peas. I mean, we did a big thing. <laughs> so he was so excited. So the following year we did it again. This mm -hmm. time he was inside and he had more of the apartment folks there. Mm -hmm. We had the music going. I said, come on, child, we're going to dance. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, man, he was jumping. I was bumping. <laughs> and all, you know, but he had such a good time. Oh, so, I remember that. When I could, I always gave the food to Spank. And she would take it to her, Now, so. is that the party where he had the money pinned to him? Mm -hmm. You need we to come. You need to come to the brunch because we got that photo yes. with him and that money pin yeah, to him. Because yeah, Rob was there. You know, Will you go uh, over and tell those people to come to B and M Barbecue for brunch? Yeah. So because I, I bought all that food. Knew that uh, we took care of it. Oh we well, I knew, I knew because Shardina, Shardina kept me yes. kept me up to speed. Oh. Look at you! So, what is that? Look at that my purse, thing. My purse. Look at that. I missed that. I'm trying to um, get video. Oh. Are you going to join us for brunch? You going to join us for brunch? They told me. Okay. Uh -huh. You going to join us for brunch? Yeah, I'm so sorry. We oh. just found out this morning. We like, we got to go. I, I tried so hard, but trying to get, I, I really just got his phone yesterday. Oh, okay. Finally, just wanted to go through his contacts right. and try and call people because it was just hard. I had to try and get here. Right. And yeah, it is. I couldn't. And I had somebody pick up the phone. I was like, please start calling people. And I was telling his friends, tell somebody somebody else but i already know there's going to be a lot of people to come and go i didn't know right. oh lord sorry i had just asked robert about him but you know it's i'm, I'm glad y'all made the time to come Thank yeah so we much. did we had to because he was a good guy are y'all put it down put it down are, are you going to come to me and him for brunch yeah. okay yeah. all right yeah. everybody know excuse me do you know mr put it down. Lewis? <laughs> no you don't know mrs you guys yeah. all going to come to be in them barbecue for brunch yeah. you going to come to be in them for brunch i don't know if i am i gotta take my car to the doctor i just landed i just got the airplane well you are you welcome to come are they ready yes sir now? yeah they're ready right now yeah. okay. yep i gotta stop and get some champagne but other than that they're ready to go <laughs> nobody needs champagne no, no, oh, so no. it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, thanks, Kevin. Okay, y'all guys sit in there. Oh, okay. Y'all two standing next to each so, <laughs> oh, good. I think you remember all Charlie's close friends. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> we all 